What are the role of cancer stem cells? How are cancer stem cells forming? And you know, clearly, this is this is a, a big area of research that people are looking at. Somebody may not have a you know diagnosable tumor, but they may have start of some cancer stem cells, or they may be quote unquote in remission, but cancer stem cells are popping up. So, how do you view those? So, cancer stem cells and can- and circulating tumor cells are the same thing. Mm-hmm. So. A cancer stem cell doesn't, so cancer starts by something getting inside a healthy cell causing cell replication. It doesn't start with a cancer stem cell. So cancer begins with something getting inside a healthy cell and causing cell replication. Now, as those cells replicate, they're replicating cells that are stayed in the same space. Therefore, the mass is getting larger, right? So cancer can't be diagnosed. It won't be diagnosed until the cancer is rather large as far as number of cells. A a PET scan and a CT scan won't pick up cancer unless it's over 3 million cells large. Okay, that's still pretty Mm. small, right? Still size of, of a pinhead, right? And so, but that's a lot of cells. That's how small cells are. Way before cancer is diagnosed, it's giving off cancer stem cells or circulating tumor cells. I like to use circulating tumor cells because it's explaining what they do. They circulate. So there's some that are staying in the mass and the mass is getting larger, larger, larger. Now I have this mass in my breast that I can palpate. You know, it's in the millions and millions and millions of cells large now. And now it can be diagnosed. Long before it was even palpable, it was giving off cells that were circulating around. And if you think of it like a cartoon again, because I'm a simple-minded person, these cells are just circulating around looking for a place to set up home and raise a family. That's what metastasis is. And truly, for most cancers, it's the metastasis that will end up causing the person's demise if the person ends up passing away from the cancer. It's usually not the primary cancer in most cancers. So, Circulated tumor cells, cancer stem cells are circulating through the body, looking for opportunistic places to move to and start replicating there. Unfortunately, if a person just does standards of care, so they're going to go in, they found this lump in their breast, boy, I have to do something. They go in, get a biopsy. Yep, it's cancer. So we're going to do, let's say they're going to do chemotherapy. They're going to do radiation. They're going to do lumpectomy or whatever is the standard for that particular cancer. Chemotherapy may kill cancer cells that are in rapid replication because chemotherapy is going to be more attracted to more highly metabolic cells. But chemotherapy does not kill cancer stem cells. So Circulating tumor cells are not yet in a state of rapid replication. Therefore, chemotherapy is doing nothing to them. And it gets even worse because chemotherapy is going to be attracted to rapidly replicating cell lines. Well, that's good because that's what cancer is. Yeah, but that's why people lose their hair because your hair follicles are rapidly replicating by nature. So it tends to attack your hair follicles and your immune system Hmm. is rapidly replicated. So You have two naturally rapidly replicating cell lines in your body, your hair follicles and your immune system. So chemotherapy suppresses your immune response. So anybody who knows, who's ever done chemotherapy knows that they have to get a white blood cell count before every chemotherapy because, you know, it's going to, you know, suppress your white blood cells. Well, what is going to, what is going to kill circulating tumor cells if chemotherapy is not? What is going to kill Mm. them? The only thing that's going to kill them is your immune system. So the catch-22 of doing chemotherapy is that you're setting yourself up possibly for two years down the line, oh, the cancer's come back with a vengeance. Well, not really. It it never went away. You know, you had a false idea that you were, you know, tumor-free and no evidence of disease, but, you know, you were pre-diagnostic at that point. The, the circulating tumor cells now just had a greater opportunity to start raising that family in the liver. Yeah, and those cancer cells will adapt too. Those cancer stem cells now will adapt and become more more resistant to chemotherapy. Yeah, it gets worse, doesn't it? 
yeah, so it's harder to treat. So what a lot of the conventional doctors are finding is, you know, that the, the, the first time somebody gets diagnosed, they come in, they get chemo, they typically see fairly good results. But then when the cancer comes back, very hard to treat. Well, that's what I'm in favor of. It just makes sense. It's like, I'm not against doing chemo and I'm not against doing surgical debulking of a cancer or doing radiation. And that's not my forte anyhow. I can't give that advice, but why don't you keep that in your back pocket? Why don't you do yeah. things to address the cause? Why don't you do things that, to stimulate your immune system to change the, you know, the, the environment that has allowed the cancer to proliferate? Why don't you do those things first? And then if you need to use chemo to knock it down, I mean, then you can choose to do that, but um, you're not you're not jumping to that in the first place. Yeah, and you can stack your odds by, you know, in a sense, doing fasting, things like that when you do use the chemotherapy so you can get the best possible benefit. I'm totally in alignment with you. I think that kind of the shotgun approach, it's like, you know, we're just going to flood the system with chemotherapy and almost create a reliance, you know, basically create a reliance on this sort of highly invasive, dangerous drug in order to to keep you alive rather than all these other things that you could be doing, you know, to kind of stack your odds and give you the best possible chance.